It's YouTube Wednesday! In order to make the mask, I'm going to use this plaster head form that we made in a previous video. And uh, that's going to be my basis and sort of my structure. I don't want burlap right up against the skin, so I'm actually going to put on a protective spray sock. You can buy these at Sherwin-Williams stores or Home Depot. It shouldn't be more than $3. And this is just going to be a lot nicer up against the skin than just straight burlap. Now I'm going to start cutting some pieces of burlap in order to put on the mask. I'm going to go ahead and get a bunch of pieces cut so that I can just apply and not worry about stopping to cut a piece and then apply. So I have pulled up some images, some scarecrow images on the computer that I like um, and that's going to kind of be a guide. When I cut all these out I didn't have a lot in mind. Uh, and so part of the creativity process of this is going to be picking a piece and putting it on. Uh, normally I like to have a super detailed vision when I start and that informs all my choices. In this case, I'm going to allow the material that I'm using to make some of those choices because I'm using a lot of the natural look of the burlap. Uh, when I cut, I did keep in mind stripes and how they would affect the piece. I also kept in mind pieces that have seams on them where the bag is sewn together. This is the burlap bag that I got from a farm store. It was $1.50. But that seam, uh, the seams I may use. That's stitching that I don't have to do, which is my favorite kind of stitching. All right, I'm going to start on the back too. And I want to leave an opening in the back because I want to put on Velcro. I actually have some Velcro here and that's going to allow this to fit a couple different sizes of heads. I'm not going to use latex to do this. I'm going to use contact cement. Uh, contact cement is actually an adhesive and latex is not a great adhesive. It makes a mechanical bond, yes, it takes forever to dry uh, and I think this is going to seep through the burlap less so I have more of a burlap look and it will also uh, dry faster. Okay, I'm going to start putting contact cement on my pieces uh, on one side so that I can then use them as I wish in a rapid fashion. going to aid the drying with a heat gun. So I have my contact cement, both sides are dry enough, I have lots of options as far as materials go. One of the first things I want to put down is I want to put down the Velcro in the back. And I'm putting them on while this is whole and then I will uh, cut the seam up the middle of the back. I'm going to put material over these also so the backs of these also get contact cement. Now I will have the adjustment ability of Velcro on the back of the mask. You just grab a piece here and I can lock that in.
touch the back of my mask. Now something I want to do is I want to extend this mask so it's actually a little bit longer than just my head. And uh, I'm gonna use some of these longer pieces in here to hang down. That way I'm gonna get some neck coverage. To do that, I wanna add a little more contact cement up onto these pieces. We need contact cement on both sides for it to stick and it has to dry. Those rules don't change. Now I can take a piece, attach it to here, because both of those are dry. One more piece here on around the mouth in order to have it hang down right in front and I'm going to cut that piece in a Y to get a better grab. Okay, so I did that Y cut so that I can attach this here and this piece right here. And I'm just going to add a wrinkle in there because I don't want it super flat. You want some texture. Okay, now this down here is done. Now I get to do the fun part of working on the face. I have this piece here, and I don't want this piece to go on uh, just solid. So I'm, I'm putting a wrinkle in there. And see how that wrinkle is giving me an area of buildup? Now, whatever I put on top is gonna have some texture. And I'm gonna use that to build some eye sockets. So the piece I have in mind for this area is this bit of stitching. And I want it to go right over and down the middle of the nose. Just like that. And I can pinch this, and since that bottom side is uh, contact cemented, that's going to stay. All right, so I'm gonna add a couple more pieces in. Just build up this side of the face. I need something here, like a cheekbone. So I'm gonna cut me a chunk of this. You know what, actually, this is a nice flat head top piece. I want a little bit of a point in it. So I'm gonna put it up here. I'm putting the edges down first. And that leaves me room in the middle, and now I can get a little bit of a point. All those wrinkles are going to stick to themselves because of the contact cement. And I want these edges, I want these edges out, I want to have them a little bit frayed looking. I stick those two down. Now this is going over the eye. I'm going to fold this up underneath and have it stick to itself. That way I'm sort of getting more of that eye socket to form up here. Do the same thing on the other side. Here, this forms that eye socket. So I'm going to start closing this in and start building this out and up a little bit. Both the burlap and the uh, cotton paint sock are natural fibers. So they're more resistant to the heat gun than a synthetic fiber. Synthetics will shrink up and they will get hard when you heat gun them. 
the burlap and the cotton will not. And it's okay to cut smaller pieces off of the big pieces that you've already done in order to fill in areas. The more bonds you have, the more pieces you have attaching it, kind of the better. Now if you want a super smooth look, you can do all one sheet and then put some strategic wrinkles in. That's fine too. This is a matter of style and preference. I still want to leave that sewn edge. So I fold this piece to make sure that edge stays visible. Okay, see so on this nice open mouth that comes off to the side? Now I want to put a uh, top lip on there. So I'm going to push that down, push that down. Contact cement is kind of a strong uh, adhesive. Uh, it has toluene in it, so that's what gives it that hard smell. Um, have adequate ventilation. I have two air scrubbers going, um, and we just turned on some air conditioners to move some air around. So keep ventilation in mind, and don't make this 20 minutes before you want to wear it to a party, because you're going to be high at the party. Um, and not with fun stuff, just contact cement. Uh, so let this air out, like have this be done a week before Halloween. When you're laying these on the table, always keep these laid sticky side up because you won't necessarily be able to see the glue on it once it's dry. You can feel it, but if your fingers are covered in contact cement, that gets hard too. Wear gloves. I'm going to add some teeth. For teeth, I'm going to hot glue them in and I'm going to use uh, popsicle sticks. I think that these guys have a feel like a picket fence almost and I think that works well for scarecrows. So, I want to cut them in half, and then I'll sharpen them. Okay, I have my hot glue gun here. I'm going to put down a couple beads of glue. just start placing the teeth where I want them. Holding it upside down, I'm having the glue not drip down the tooth, and I'm also allowing it to beat up on the end, and then I can shove it up into the top here. I'm giving my teeth kind of a sweep in this direction. Uh, I think that'll be a fun look. Now I'm going to add a little bit of burlap just to hide all the hot glue of holding the teeth in. And uh, I'm going to hot glue that on. I'm going to use a piece that actually has no contact cement on it. And I'm just going to hot glue that on. And uh, that will hold just fine here on the outside. Now that's all nice and tidy. And I'm going to add a few more pieces with the hot glue gun in order to alter the look and flesh out some of these shapes. I'm also going to curl this up with the hot glue gun. Okay, I've cut out a piece for this eye. I want it to go over that, but I actually want to be able to see better out of it. So I'm going to pull out some of the threads. I'm going to break the weave so that the holes are bigger. Now I can see out of that. See how well you can see through that now? And it's going to go up here on this eye.
I'm again using hot glue because the hot glue is also going to act like a fray checker and it's going to stop this from unraveling further after it's in the mask. I'm just taking out every other thread basically on one direction. I don't want to do both, that's too big a holes. And I really only have to do that middle area that's over the eye. That feels pretty good to me as far as a basic mask. Um, I think that this eye socket's a little too big. I'm gonna fix it. And this little strip has hot glue on it and that's gonna act like a butterfly stitch. And hold my repaired eye socket together. Let's add some accessories and paint. Since everything is dry and cured, I want to remove this before I decorate and paint. Right up here where that cut stops, I want to put a piece of fabric over there and glue it down just to kind of prevent any running from happening. But I don't want to do that until I remove the piece. Contact cement did seep through a little bit, but it's not enough to glue it because you didn't put contact cement on the head bust. And contact cement needs two sides to really stick and give you a permanent bond. I want these to get frayed and cut up, and then I need to decorate. So this here will be that bridge piece that I'm putting on in order just to stop this from running down the road. Uh, you want it just below the crown of the head so it has plenty of room to go on and off. I'm gonna put on plenty of hot glue to make, and I'm gonna put it on hot. I'm not gonna let this cool somewhere to make sure it goes into these fibers really well. This is gonna keep the mask every time you do this, it's not gonna work its way up make a bigger hole. I have some October Brown Design Master spray paint and some glossy wood tone uh, Design Master spray paint. I'm going to close my computer just in case. And I'm just reinforcing some shadows here. Just doing some general darkening. General darkening. It sounds like a Star Wars character. Now I've switched to glossy wood tone. I'm just going to kind of hit everything. I just like its look. It warms it up. And I'm going to hit hard on the edges of stuff. Make those separate pieces look separate. So that's my color. Now I'm gonna add in just some accoutrements. I have a package of fall leaves and some twine, and I'm gonna add those two elements on here in order to just make him a little more lively. And these won't fray that much because remember these were contact cemented on the back side, and that's gonna act like a fray checker as well. Don't underthink your tattering. Um, you want, don't just like cut into this and make it look like castle cren crenellations. Um, tattering can be a definitive style on how you do it. How this edge presents itself can be a big deal. Think about the edge of uh, Spawn's cape when Todd McFarlane draws it. That style of tattering is one of my favorites. There's a completely different style of tattering on the Hobgoblin in Marvel 
look at his tattered, or Carrion is a good character also, look at the tattering along the edges of his things. It has a visual style, and I want to have a visual style. So I'm actually going to sketch the tattering in before I do it, and then I'll cut it. You don't have to do that. You can internalize this, absolutely, but also it does help to give you a really different visual interest and just solidify a style in what you're doing. If you're doing 10 of these, they're all tattered differently, then that, that might look a little weird. You know, that it can add unity and it can add variance. I'm putting a hole right there. I like those teardrop shaped holes in my tatters. Those few little holes, they make all the difference. And I have twine. It's really small. I'm going to double it up a few times to give it some depth and some strength. Not actual physical strength, I mean visual strength. Like this is very visually weak on there right now. I'm going to double it up a couple times. Don't be afraid of color. Color is not your enemy. Something that you can do with color is you can spotlight something without using lights at all. If I put a ring of these yellow and red leaves around here, whatever that costume is, it's going to draw attention right up to the head. And that's what I want. Nothing is uneditable. When I change the eye socket, I forgot to glue this back in. So I'm just going to glue it back in. The design is up to you. I have good vision. Uh, at any point in time where I made one choice, you could make a different one. I could make 30 of these. They would all look different. The screen is in. You can't see my eyes, but I can see out very well. Everything I made on this mask you can buy at the hardware store. Every single thing. There's no latex in this. I didn't use any latex. The mask effectively has a liner because of the uh, paint hood that we used. This could be a mask or a prop head. Uh, you can see that it holds its shape because of the multiple layers and the contact cement. So it could be a prop head. Go make stuff! Castle Blood Haunted House. Check it out, Pennsylvania.